All right, so here we're gonna install our package, which is called Samtang package, and this is used for actually API authentication, login authentication, registration authentication, and it also protects your API. So this is what we are going to do, and this is because of security measure. Now first here we'll build our API, but before that we have to install this Samtang package. Now installing this package on Windows and iOS, they are same, so I'm just going to display it here. I mean iOS, I mean Mac operating system, so exactly the same thing. There is no difference. So if you are on Mac, you can just follow along with me and you'd be able to install it. All right, okay. Well, so first make sure that you are in your uh, project director, which is you learning app. And after that, over here, we are going to install Sanctum. Composer, require, and Laravel Sanctum, like this. So it's going to install the Sanctum package for us. It may take a bit of time based on your internet connection. Okay, after that, we're going to go ahead and use this command php audition vendor publish provider sanctum service provider. And we have to publish it. And with this, actually, we should be pretty much done. And after that, we'll see if we run php artisan migrate whether we need to migrate any databases or not. No, it, it doesn't need anything. Okay, great. And uh, now, since we have done this one and this is completed, well, in this section we'll see how to use this symptom package and we'll quickly see how it helps us to generate, um, not generate, actually help us with authentication and generate token for us and also protect our API and users as well. So let's go ahead and check that. Now first over here, I'm going to create one uh, controller over here and I would run php artisan make controller and then it would be inside api folder api folder and then here we'll name the controller user controllers because we'll have everything related to user in this controller now it would generate a controller for us and we can go ahead and verify that inside this app folder inside this HTTP folder, API folder, that this is the name that we have mentioned and it was not there previously. So everything is over here. Now over here, we're going to put two methods. Those methods would be responsible for creating our user. So over here, this is our login controller and we have two methods. What is, first one is create user and the other one is login user, this one. Now create user actually would be able to create a user and save it in the database. For creating users, first we'll have name, email, and password, and email has to be unique. And at the same time, we'll do validation. We'll see whether these things are actually unique or not, whether they're given or not. And if they're unique and given, meet a requirement, we'll create a user. Now, after that, over here, we'll return a user, and we'll return a token with the user, which means that the user has successfully logged in. If these things are not met, which means that our server has error or database has error or other things have error, so we're gonna return 500 by saying that, okay, we have this kind of error. I don't know what it is, but it is server-related error. So this is the one. And then if we are able to create a user, then it means that we'd also be able to log in. To log in, once again, we'll valid validate the user and then we'll, if the validation fails, then we'll say 401, which means that either the user doesn't exist or is a user um, is trying to hack or doing bad things or just user doesn't exist, okay? We do validation over here, and if email and password are not provided, we'll just simply say validation error. If they're provided, but if we can't find them in our database, which also means auth attempt, well, that means that your user and email, they have to be registered. And that's why here we are saying auth attempt, which also means that whether user has previously logged in, whether that logged in user 
has a token or not if you see that if we create a user actually when we do that over here you'll see that we are returning a token so this token actually is saved in our database so next time user tries to log in we'll see that for that user email and for that password we have token or not if we don't have that also means that actually user is invalid it's a wrong user well if we can find we'll skip that section it means that this condition didn't meet so in that case which means that the user is valid we'll return the first user and at the same time we'll also return a new token that took of course every time you log in you will have a new token anyway this code actually you can find from the link below uh, once again this is a dummy code a lot of these things we'll remove later we don't need this but with this we'll understand that actually what we are doing right now okay now we need to go to our routes folder which is this one and inside this we have this api routes we're going to remove this so over here we have this uh, two endpoints register and register endpoints actually refers to a method the method that we have already and login endpoint also register it points to a method login user which are in this folder and in this file over here now before we go ahead and actually do the test over here we have to do use app http and then over here we'll have uh, I think next one is controller so you have to define the path where to find this login controller so here we'll have controllers and then inside this uh, we'll have API then inside this we'll have this login controller the mm -hmm. second one so with this we are telling Laravel framework to where to find this login controller this one because we are using it so over here we are just saying okay go ahead and find it over here all right okay now we save it now this time we need to go back to our terminal and we have to make sure that our app is running so here we do PHP already send serve okay so it's running at this port and over here what are you gonna do you are going to have this uh, postman now if you don't know how to install postman I have other tutorial go ahead and check the tutorial so you have to have postman and this tool actually we are going to use it throughout all of our application all of our tutorials it would be it would play a great role so go ahead and install postman and I have other tutorials how to install and use it go ahead and check that out now anyway I'm going to remove uh, all this so that we have a fresh start over here I'm going to click on this and over here I'll have this post method and inside this I'll type in my URL which is this one actually so because our application is running on this domain which is our localhost and at this port and then we are inside API auth and register because our API's are registered in api.php file so you have to mention API and after that you have to mention your route so this is our route auth register and that's what we have done over here auth register okay now we are going to submit a form so we have to select body and over here we are going to do uh, name because this section is required and then over here we do like uh, the best tech you can name anything you want and then over here we'll have email and then we'll do like uh, a at a.com now we try to register our user and let's hit the send button and we'll see what happens now okay first thing it says that it couldn't find this HTTP controllers API login controller so let's go ahead and check so we might have some problem over here actually it's not login controller I was doing it wrong it should be user controller so let me go ahead and check this one and because here you say it's user controller sorry about that so I'm going to paste it in this in this over here I'm going, going to, to save it and I make sure that this is also this one all right so it couldn't find it so that's why we have this error now I'm going to hit the send button one more time and here it says that password field is required now this is coming from here the validation because our password is required so validation field and at the same time over here we do see that 401 authorized which is unauthorized uh, so which is coming from here so validation field 
So this time we need to go ahead and use this password over here. So let's go ahead and do password. And for now, we're just going to do one, two, three, four, five, six and hit send button. And we see that, okay, status true user created and we return this uh, AP, uh, the token, the token that we have been using. Uh, well, the token not we've been using, I'm trying to say the token that's been generated over here, status true and user created successfully. So that's what we see over here. Okay, user created successfully. Now here I do have, this is my fifth user that's been trying this because I was uh, testing before recording this uh, video. Now we can go ahead in our XAMPP server and I'm gonna click on this admin over here. And we see that our uh, database name is Laravel. Mm, I should have changed it, but I forgot it. But anyway, so inside this, you'll see that um, actually doing the test. Anyway, so over here, you will see that we have this token over here. Now, you can go ahead and add it and click and see that. So this is the token that's been generated by our uh, symptom package okay all right so here we are and if you try to create one more it'll say that validation failed because the user already exists so for this email uh, we already created a user now go ahead and try a new one so here it says that okay we created another user for you this is the sixth user now this is happening this token and everything because of symptom but now we can try to go ahead and log in now for login we don't need name we just need email and password so this is the user that's been actually registered so we can log in if you go ahead and try you'll have more actually token over there so every time a user tries to log in it gives you a new token and every token is saved over here so now of course if you try a different user like now this kind of user now which say it couldn't find it actually it couldn't find it so which also means that uh, we can't log in and which is secured so user didn't go through registration great now with this we understand how symptom package works how login works how authentication works and after that actually we'll make a lot of changes and we'll be building our own api and after building our api will actually go ahead and use them from our flutter framework now some of the things i'll keep as it is over here and some i'll change because a lot of the things we don't need or this is not the structure that we want or add it to them in next section let's go ahead and do that